Hello, Thanks welcome like to Supernova TV. I'm Chris. Thank you. It's really good to see you. Um, so yeah, we have Jessica Calvello and Trina Nishimura, who are Mikasa and Hanji Zoe as well. Uh, I was chatting to, to Bryce and Josh, they were both talking about uh, how they've had to refigure everything. Bryce was about to make a new studio in his house. Uh, Josh was operating from his you know, office room. I could see, mm -hmm. Jessica, you look like you've actually made a studio. Is that, has that been one you've had for ages? I, yeah, I've had it. I'm sorry, my dog is playing with his squeaky toy. I'm going to close my door. <laughs> <Sure thing. laughs> yeah, of course, of course, he wants attention. So he <laughs> wants to make sure that everyone knows that he's here. Um, yeah, I've actually had my, my sound booth since about 2014, 2015. Mm -hmm. And I've worked, um, I've been lucky enough to work with a number of different companies, some anime, some not anime, um, out of this booth. So I felt everyone's pain when this whole thing started because I was like, when I put this thing together and it, I didn't build it, I had to hire mm. multiple contractors to help with the sound treatment and, and all mm. that. And it was so difficult. And so, but I, I could take my time. Mm -hmm. So mm. I felt for everyone that, you know, well, gotta, gotta get to your closets, gotta get a <laughs> yeah. whisper room immediately and, you know, get, get some gear. And I mean, it's, it's, it's very expensive. It's very time consuming. So I, I was super lucky that I went through the pains, mm. you know, a few years ago. Mm. How about you, Trina? How's the sudden change of everything in 2020 affected your studio, et cetera? I feel like 2020 has affected everyone's studio mm -hmm. in their brain. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, um, I have a, a small closet under the stairs, Harry Potter style, yeah. uh, where it's like padded and everything. And that has worked for auditions and then a few commercial gigs. Um, but uh, it definitely got quite a bit of treatment <laughs> uh, around March. And then um, I am super fortunate uh, in my life to have an amazing tribe uh, of people that I can like, hey, I need some help like really badly, but we can't see each other. Mm -hmm. So I'm just gonna turn on all the air purifiers and leave my house for a little <laughs> bit, can you help me? Um, and I've had some amazing people come over, some of my best friends come over and be like, oh, wow, yeah, this is inadequate. And um, <laughs> help me make it a little bit better. <laughs> well, a lot better, a lot mm -hmm. better. So I've been very fortunate. It's, it's definitely different, mm -hmm. um, but um, and it is, it is always a little bit strange when there's a dog barking or something. <laughs> uh, like right when I got my studio up and running this year, uh, we were, I was doing an audition and a tree fell on my house oh, and boy. like busted through the uh, roof. <laughs> so wow. like I have a recording of that moment though, where I'm like, <laughs> and so if you too want to get the new, what the beep, 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 beep. <laughs> oh, wow. Actually, uh, yeah, so it's it's definitely different. <laughs> That's so 2020 that a how that a, a tree fell on your house while you were recording out of yeah. your booth. <laughs> That's just yeah. Um, I, I was chatting to the um, to well, to Aaron and to uh, um, to Armin, um, to Bryce and to Josh, and mm -hmm. uh, they were talking about you know screaming things at the top of their lungs and worrying about their neighbors coming in. <laughs> so yeah, it's it's a really strange. <laughs> Really strange year, strange it's, time for anything. But it's the year that you'd I, be I have forgiven to apologize for to yelling. Jessica. Oh, that's sorry. true. That's yes. true. No, you're fine. I was just going to apologize to Jessica because she's already heard this story. <laughs> but I, my funniest story, I think of all time for the rest of my life is uh, I was um, recently. My partner was recently hospitalized. He's fine now. Everything's okay. Good. But we were in the hospital for a very long time. And once again, my amazing tribe swooped in and helped me outfit the telephone room to the waiting room because everything in the floor, like nobody could come visit or anything because of COVID. And so the hospital okayed me using their telephone room. Um, and I was recording a, a really uh, scary scene that was really violent. And they, my friends had basically made me this blanket fort that took up the entire telephone room. Mm -hmm. And I was just screaming, just effing kill him, just effing kill him over and over. But like it, the microphone kept peeking out. So I was just screaming it over and over and over. <laughs> and like a, um, a, a maintenance guy, a cleaning man, like, like tried to bust into the blanket fort and to check to see if I was okay. It was pretty <laughs> epic. Oh my God. That's I have not very heard dramatic. that story. That's pretty amazing. That is amazing. In a <laughs> hospital. Awesome. <laughs> you're already in a hospital in a telephone yeah. room 
<laughs> screaming <laughs> to kill someone under a blanket. <laughs> <for it. Yeah. laughs> it's good to have, have see they have any... good duty of care there. <laughs> they do. They do. Yes. They want to make sure no one's killing anybody in any telephone rooms. So that's nice. <laughs> Now this season is coming, but you you know nothing about it whatsoever. Have you tried to remain as spoiler free as possible? No manga, no nothing. Yeah. So for me, I uh, and Trina has heard this story a million times. <laughs> I, um, I I watched the whole first season before um, before the before I knew who had the dub or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And so I had I knew exactly what was coming when I when I was going into the studio. And then for the second season, I would watch the episode before I went into the studio because I just wanted to be prepared. And then third season, I was like, you know what? I'm going in cold. I don't want to know anything. I, I don't. I just I want to be surprised. I want to just be spontaneous. And mm -hmm. and I and I've never been reading the manga. And so season three was such a surprise. So, yeah, for season four, I barely even remember what happened in season three at this point. <laughs> Um, and yeah, I'm just, I've heard some stuff that I'm just going to ignore, um, and pretend like I didn't hear, uh, but yeah, I have, yeah, I'm super excited. I don't know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, if you decided, uh, to avoid trying to come up with your own theories, I mean, it's, yeah, I was saying to, before, it's just such a crazy show that you could not predict it, I guess, but kind of fun no. to try. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I could predict uh, up until now. Like, I don't think I've predicted anything correctly. <laughs> I have tried. I've made attempts. I'm like, this is what's going to happen. This is what's going to be in the basement. This is what's going to happen. And it's, I've been wrong every time. So I've stopped <laughs> trying, uh, but it's definitely tempting. Uh, it's not an official tagline, but I, I suppose one could be everything you know is wrong. <laughs> <Just sort> <laughs> thing you could say every single time <laughs> something That's interesting perfect. happens <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> um so yeah with your uh with your voice acting which is acting I guess I don't really need to say voice acting it's just yeah um do you have any ways to get into um the characters and you find that um coming in fresh is pro is some of the best way to to react in a fresh uh way in an honest uh, uh acting way Personally, that's my, I mean, that's my preference. Like I like to experience what the character is going through in the moment, um, as far as things that like get me ready to uh, record Mikasa specifically. Um, there's all obviously vocal warmups that most people do, um, but um, because especially for Mikasa, because she screams a lot <laughs> and her screams are like really intense and like guttural and visceral. Um, but mostly I just try and feel really sad. <laughs> you know, like <laughs> the world is ending, all of my friends are dying and this is fun. This is and a, uh, that's a big all I get that. <laughs> Oh my God. <laughs> sorry, I didn't mean it like that, I'm sorry. But it's <laughs> easier to tap into, I think everyone's, everyone's feeling sad. I, I, it does yeah. kind of feel like this show's tone, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, seems so crazy in 2019 and in 2020 you watch it and you go, yeah, yeah, I get this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's sort of a, a bittersweet sort of, you know, anything could happen and horrible things have happened and, um, and but maybe there's hope. Get worse. Yes. Yeah. But it may get the better. Show, but not in the world. Not in the world, yes. Uh, How do you that... get into character, Jessica? <laughs> yeah. Um, I, you know, I don't, I just, I go in cold. Um, mm -hmm. I, I will do some vocal warmups, um, you know, like early morning sessions. And when I say early, I mean, even like if it's 10 AM, I'm like, Oh, it's early. Uh, <laughs> I'll make sure that I've done something, definitely had some hot liquids and, and you know, done some vocal exercises, but past that, um, I just go in and I just try to be super organic and, you know, just go for it and hope I get something right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hanji's pretty crazy, but, um, you know, I, uh, I just go for it. Hmm. I guess it's got to be uh, a, a good, a good profession to have, um, in 2020, something that just really gets your emotions out, like as raw as they possibly could be. I, I, I suppose uh, 
Hanji, you, you get to be uh, very uh, angry and in control, I suppose, a lot of the time. Is that a, is that a fun character to play? Very fun character to play. And uh, I, I, feel, I feel so bad. I've been putting Trina through all these stories for years. With, no. with, with, <laughs> just like, I just keep repeating myself. But the, the thing I, I love about Hanji and her crazy is that she's got uh, Hanji. Sorry, Hanji has the other side of being um, uh, not crazy. I think Hanji mm. has a real balance of the light and the dark, which I think mm -hmm. is super important for a show because, you know, Attack on Titan's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> it's so it's so bleak and so sad and so dark and so upsetting and so um i'm grateful for the the, the high points that we have mm. with with fun characters like like sasha is another character that brings light and humor with that potato obsession and and just sasha's such a wonderful character and so yeah i um hanji's nuts and i the 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 crazy the crazy parts are easier for me to play. I tend to be typecast, no, no, no brag and no complain. Uh, I, I love that, I, that I've that i got those energetic characters uh, that I'm cast as those a lot. So I actually have to sort of be reined in sometimes for the not so crazy parts to make sure that I'm, you know, that the I'm delivering the exposition and the talky talky stuff, not crazy because you know, Hanji's not crazy all the time, just part of the time. And so I, I gotta make sure that I maintain a balance Hmm. And so that's, that's a lot, that's a challenge and it's, it's a lot of fun. So, hmm. yeah. And uh, Trina, what's your go-to sort of uh, getting into Mikasa's character? Um, getting into Mikasa's character is m mostly um, just because she's, she's suffered so much trauma throughout hmm. the course of her life mm -hmm. um, is just kind of channeling that just sort of, down. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole yeah. lot of coming down. Uh, that's what's great about Anji and Sasha is they they come together and they give the audience those moments where you just after so much trauma and so much heartache and so much death uh those characters uh like just let the audience breathe for a mm. moment and I love that about their characters um Hanji especially she's Hanji and your performance of her uh, of Hanji <laughs> is awesome is super awesome. But um, for Mikasa, it's just mostly channeling all of my dark inner teenage angst from when the world was ending. And I listened to a lot of Fiona Apple and Tori Amos. <laughs> oh my God, so did I. <laughs> yeah, like, you know, when you're just like, the world is ending and no one understands me. Yeah, so I actually did listen to piano and vocal and yeah. you know, get you in Angry there. piano, angry, angry music. Um, like, yeah, so that's Mikasa. That's fun. 